Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, so wherever you've been, let's just start by getting you here. Um, I'm going to probably, just to give you an overview, I'm going to talk for five or ten, just to kind of share what we're going to do. Then we're going to do it. Um, it's going to be stuff involving everyone together, and then stuff involving smaller groups, and then coming back together in a big group. And there's going to be games throughout, activities throughout. Um, the thing I want to stress uh, up front, even before saying anything, is that you're going to get out of tonight what you decide to put into it. There's nothing I can make happen in that regard. Connection is something that is, as, as far as I've seen, it's one of the deepest human needs. It's a craving that we all have. We all have different resistances from deeper and deeper connection. And it's just up to you to decide what you want tonight to be like. So I'm just going to stick that out in the front. So I want you to just start for a second by uh, putting your food down, just like letting go, and just close your eyes for a second. And just let yourself sink into the last time that you had just a fucking amazing connections. Let that person just pop into your head. Let the room that you were in pop into your mind. What did you talk about? And just try to feel in your body what was it about that thing that made the connection so good? Was it the way that they saw you? Was it their specific personality or humor? Was it what you saw in them? And just notice that as you have the memories of this, you'll feel it in your body. Like I can see it in the smiling jaws of like half the people in the room. It's a juicy feeling. So I want you to really just like feel that feeling, simmer in that feeling, and also question yourself. What was it that made that connection feel so damn good? <clears throat> Try to keep that feeling in your body while we come back and just talk about it for, you know, one minute. So come on back to the room. Do a couple people want to share, you know, a quality that made them feel that kind of depth of connection? What was something that was present there that made it feel so good? Yeah. Acceptance. Acceptance. Great. What kind of acceptance? Unconditional. Unconditional acceptance. Really beautiful. How many people had a condition of unconditional acceptance as part of that feeling of connection? Okay, like half of people. Great. What else? In the back. Gratitude. Gratitude. Awesome. How many people felt gratitude was part of that connection? Cool, like a third. A couple more qualities. Yeah. I found the history of familiarity with that person. Ah, like a shared kind of history. Yeah, how many people had a shared history in their connection? Kind of like a, like a name, 15 years ago. Cool. One more. Yeah. Curiosity. Curiosity. Really beautiful. How many people had a sense of curiosity in their connection? Some people had both hands curious. Yeah. <laughs> That's really common. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm just going to add a couple. Uh, how many people had a feeling of uh, empathy for the other person's experience. Yeah, pretty, pretty universal. How many people felt like a sense of deep safety? Okay. So that's also, I would say that's, you know, 70%, something like that. So I want to I flip it and, and ask you some questions in the other direction. Um, you know, what we know statistically is that at this point in the country, loneliness is the, the, high, the highest we've ever measured it. Right? We're in the densest that the cities have ever been, and yet we have this distance. And to me, that's been a really huge riddle. I had a really deep sense of loneliness for most of my life. And it, you know, I wasn't even trying to address it for most of my life. It was just this kind of pain in the background. And then it became the focus of my whole life is to understand that loneliness and how to bridge that loneliness. And 
So I want to understand uh, from where you guys are at, what are the things that most get in the way of that kind of deep connection? You know, if we go under the, the assumption that that connection is available all the time, and we're somehow protecting ourselves from it for some resistance. What what things are getting in the way? Yeah. Fear of intimacy. Fear of intimacy. Awesome. What is your fear of what will happen with intimacy? Uh, vulnerability, rejection. Yeah, pain of rejection. How many people have a pain of a fear of rejection getting in the way of deeper connection? Yeah, every. And if you're in the front, like, look around. Because uh, what I want to really do is show the universality of a lot of this. It's very rare that someone's going to say pain of rejection and, and it's going to be the only person in the audience. That is like one of the most universal things that keeps us from really stepping out all the way into the unknown. Thank you. you know, what, what other things come up? Yeah, in the back. Uh, like politeness. Politeness. Hi. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you want to say something that might not be considered polite. Well, so how do you balance your desire to connect and the fact that they might not want to connect? <coughs> Still a mystery. <laughs> cool. How many, how many people are in that situation where they have this desire, but they don't really know if the other person wants to connect? Cool, pretty similar. In some sense, there, there's a tie over to that fear of rejection again. You know, what if you go for it? Uh, you know, if you don't go for it, you'll never find out that you were rejected. It feels a lot better than like walking up to the person and finding out for sure that they didn't want you around. Yeah. Great, what else? Um, right in, yeah. Judgment. Judgment. What kind of judgment? Great. And how do you differentiate that from the general fear of rejection? Like, say, you know, it sounds almost like they might not reject you, but there's going to be judgment in the relationship. So what, what is that judgment? Like, what's the worst judgment someone could walk away thinking about you? like they know what your whole life experience is in one sentence and moves on to the next thing. Or really common is they'll, you'll, you'll expose some really deep heartfelt thing and they'll be like, oh yeah, that's like when this happened to me. Right? You're kind of like, you're, you know, you're just left, left on the edge. Like, wait a second, I was just like opening my heart up. Cool. Oh uh, yeah, again. To kind of go off on that, sometimes your experiences are bigger than other people's experiences or they have an experience that they have, so it's overwhelming sometimes for them to hear everything. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, that's like that gap that can be filled because empathy is there, but not everybody can get it. Right, so, so in case everyone didn't hear this, that you might have experiences that are beyond the realm of what someone else knows and then there might be overwhelm in being exposed to those experiences. That would, yeah. And what would change if you had if you were fine having everyone you came in contact with be overwhelmed by you? Yeah, I don't care. If they, don't want, if, they, if they get overwhelmed and they don't want to be there, then I'm not holding, you know. Okay, so it doesn't really stop you from connecting. No, but I've, like, I've heard from other people that that is a reason why they won't share things. Okay, okay. Yeah, how many people hold back things because they think it's going to be overwhelming to the person who hears it? Okay, that's cool. I hadn't heard that one before. That's <laughs> I could definitely think of examples of it. Yeah, one more. Yeah, right in the back. Um, lack of uh, lack of attention or ability to focus attention, or having something going on on the inside in your mind that is just grabbing your attention, which makes it hard to focus on the person. Hmm. Yeah. So lack of you're you're thinking about something else. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like you want to have right. connection with the person. So what keeps that inside? What makes you decide to keep that inside instead of expose it to the person you're with? Oh, expose that, that your, your mind is up yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, talk about intimate. Yeah. 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 What I what I find is that there's like in any situation I'm in, there's some place where I can be vulnerable. And I don't, I, I, I can never know in advance. You know, I was thinking about this event tonight and I was thinking about like, the most important thing for me to do here, like, is to make you all feel safe enough to be yourself. And the, the way that I can best do that is to permission it by me being myself and me being vulnerable with you. And so in advance, you know, I'm driving over, I'm like, well, how do I do that? And I'm, I'm thinking, like, oh, if I think about it in advance, then I'm not being vulnerable, I have to be, I have to let something arise in the moment, and it has to be the real thing that's vulnerable to say. And I find that a lot, um, it happens a lot in conversation. I have really a lot of trouble with listening comprehension because someone will say something and it'll trigger so many thoughts that I'll actually have been listening to them so much that it'll keep me from listening to the next thing, but then I'll just often pretend that I heard it and kind of come back in. When I, when I could just say, you know what, like, I garbled the last 60 seconds of what you said. I was thinking about this one thing. And, and I've started to do that, and every time I've done it, we've been in really deep connection immediately. It's like owning that thing. Um, what I find with all of vulnerability involving connection is that it's scary. Um, and that's why this balance of safety and scariness is really important to me. Um, <coughs> There is Mina in the corner with the kind of grayish purple shawl. And I talked to her before. She has a lot of experience working with groups, facilitating groups. And I wanted there, while I'm doing this, I just wanted there to be one person that you all recognize that if you feel like you're like going into connection and things come up that you actually feel like it's, it flusters you and it makes you feel like I don't feel totally safe anymore, there's, there's someone here that can always be able to handle that. Like we've, we've seen a lot. Um, so this is, you know, this is very straightforward kind of light work compared to the retreats that we'll do where that are like residential for a week, um, as a lot of people in the audience know from having been in them. Um, but you're going to be treading this line of like not complete utter safety. You're going to be seeing what it feels like to stretch yourself out. And no one, as I said in the beginning, no one is going to make you go to a 10 and like you know, Tony Robbins level of vulnerability, or, you know what I mean, like Tony Robbins level of bigness, but applied to vulnerability. Um, you, can, you can just need self-care today and to take it really easy. But what I'm offering is that um, the space is safe. I'm gonna keep this space safe. And if anyone starts to give anger to someone else or give judgment to someone else, I'm gonna stop that. And I think that's really important to lay the kind of groundwork and container of what's here. So your safety is my primary concern here, so that you feel so like at ease that when some scary thing comes up that you might say to somebody, uh, you test it out and, and see what happens. So we could talk forever. I really want to get into things and into your bodies and everything. Um, games to me are this really beautiful technology. Um, you know, consciousness hacking is usually about like straight up technology with electrons flowing and things like that. Um, and to me, there's games that I have created or games that I've made up with friends that are just connection games that just by introducing a rule or two for how we're going to interact completely changes the depth of our interaction, completely changes our openness with each other, our safety with each other, and transforms us. And so to me, it's an incredible technology and it's incredibly underutilized. And so what I really want to do throughout is, I'm just going to be giving you guys different little frameworks to try with each other. And you're just going to feel like, how does that change my state? And what does that do to my sense of connection with people? And what does it do to my sense of openness and safety and vulnerability? So one thing I just want to put seed in the space, it might never happen tonight, it might happen a hundred times, is you know, we evolve based on the reward structures that are in place. And so one thing I started to play, one of these, like there's games that like I can, we're gonna be playing a game right now, and there's games that happen in parallel, like right now while we're just doing anything we do, there's other games that can happen throughout. So I want to introduce one of those before we get started. 
And this game is just called, I don't even have a name for it, it's like points for vulnerability. <laughs> so my theory is that if we start rewarding each other for vulnerability, the whole world is going to transform itself. And we don't even have to have any kind of like structure in place except for safety. And I'll describe more about what I mean by vulnerability, but you all know that feeling of like, oh my god, there's this thing I really want to say, like it's really my truth, and it's a really a, an edgy thing to share. That's the kind of vulnerability I'm talking about. I'm talking about deeper and deeper authenticity with your own experience, regardless of the consequences that are going to happen. So if you are in a group or with someone and they do something that is like, whoa, they really like took a step into vulnerability and you want to reward that, you can say, point. And no one's keeping track, so it's just a sort of point in the moment. It's just a way to give that person like a good feeling for uh, a good reward for what they did, and it, it works great. I've had groups of six people doing this, and you know, if someone goes really vulnerable, you get a million points. Fuck <laughs> yeah, a million points. You know, really vulnerable. And I find that people doing that for like 20 minutes start to all of a sudden all this stuff gets unlatched in their brain, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna do it. Everyone's gonna give me points. You know. <laughs> So I'm just introducing that. Feel free at any time to give your fellow uh, event goers points for going for it. It's, a, it's always an edgy feeling thing. As far as I can see, the more vulnerable I get, the more I do this work, the more I feel that edge. Like the more these like really scary things come up to say to people and it changes all my relationships because I start to say them to everybody. Um, okay, if everyone could grab their chair, and just like move it to the side complete thing we're gonna call, all come back together with no chairs. So the first thing we're gonna do, and this is, you know, for some people this is really straightforward, for some people this is already an edgy thing. Um, we're just gonna shake around for a couple minutes. Just like do whatever your body wants to do. If you need, wanna make noise, make noise. There's no structure. See how much attention you can keep in yourself and just like let you do exactly what your body wants to do. No one else cares what you are doing. This is just a chance for you to get more and more deep in your body. And there's like a hundred of you in here, so I expect some of you are going to want to make noise, so feel free to make some noise. Wonderful. How's that feel? Better. Yeah, you can do that anytime you want. Um, okay, I think we're going to be able to do this. Just lay on the ground, like lay completely on the ground, lay yourself out. You know, it's going to be a little tight, but make it happen. Just honor how you feel about it. I'm not trying to judge any response, but I want you to just notice these things as we go. What is my default feeling in my body when connection is offered in different ways? Not trying to change it. Just trying to notice and become aware of where we're at. Just scan your body for a second. Is there anything you're holding? You need to be holding? You're, you're welcome to hold anything you want. You're also welcome to let it go. Now we're going to have some fun. Everyone <laughs> is going to breathe in and synchronize when I say, and you're just going to all let out a sigh. So everyone breathe deep in and sigh out. <laughs> Keep asking questions of ourselves through the whole night. How does that make me feel? Now we're going to do a variation. You're going to sigh and you're just going to land on some note, whatever that note is for you, and then you're going to hold that note for the rest of the sigh. So it might go like, 
It's gonna be different for everybody. You don't have to match anyone's note. Everyone inhale deep. And a sigh out holding a note. <laughs> Actually try to hear the note that wants to happen in the whole group. So everyone breathe, breathe deeply in and a deep sigh out matching the note of the room. Feel once again, how does that change the way your body feels? Especially for the people in the middle, how did it feel to just be surrounded by the sound that you were a part of? And the last thing we're gonna do with these sighs, just keep checking in, you know, if I can put a note in the back of your minds, just throughout the evening, just check in, like, what is the experience that I'm doing right now change about the way I feel in my body? So what we're gonna do now is just for about two minutes, you're gonna just breathe deeply in, and on the out, you're just gonna sigh however you need and however you want. Breathe in, and just cycle these sighs out. Once again, feel your body. I had to stop you before you started falling asleep. Feel what that changes. For me, it's like as soon as I usually let out two sides, I find there's like three more that I've been waiting to get out. And I just want to prime you with one thing before we get up. Just think, think about the things that for you get in the way of deeper connection. What are the things that you hold in that you want to let out? That if the conditions were exactly the way that you needed them, that you would just be craving to let go of and to have supported. Maybe there's some shame in there that would want to be shared. Maybe you're scared of something that you want to have a safe environment to get through. Maybe there's grief that you, you know, in our society, there's not a lot of places to grieve. What are the things that if you felt completely safe and permissioned, you would do that would change the way that you connect with other people? Everyone that I've ever met craves deepening their connection with others. And everyone that I've ever met has fears around deepening their connection with others. So feel into what yours are, and then feel into what do you want to lean into tonight? What's going to come up that you're going to experiment with tonight? You don't even know what exercises we're going to do. But what typically comes up that you want to really explore? And how edgy do you want to feel? You know, are you in one of those moods where you're just like, you know, you want your heart cracked open however it happens? Or are you in a mood where you just want to, just really want soft support? Um, there's going to be no judgment from me, and I won't allow it from other people in the room. But we're just going to have a chance to explore how we are and what we crave. And see how we can meet each other more deeply. Okay, take that feeling in your body and come to a standing position. Take, take your time.
much up. Really savor, savor where you're at. What I want to do now is we're going to split up into groups of six people uh, so we can have more of a kind of group intimate connection. Um, yeah, if you need to like shake off the almost falling asleep or whatever, we can do a little more shake. Um, so we're going to break up into groups of six. And what I want to do uh, to prep for that is I've worked with a lot of people in this kind of space of vulnerable, you know, authentic connection. Um, a lot of us, I, I learned a lot of this from a teacher named Joe Hudson that a lot of you might have worked with through another one of these events or somewhere else. Um, and you know, that, that has led to a lot of what I facilitate. So what I want to make sure of is that you all in these groups of six have an example of someone who's going to permission what's, what's allowed, what's possible in the group. And so what I want to do is have everyone that has worked with me or Joe doing this kind of depth of authentic work to raise your hand if you're okay being like one of the kind of core group people. Awesome, so if you guys can just disperse yourself and everyone else just like look around, find who you're drawn to, and you know, clump up with those people until there's six of you. And obviously at some point there, that might be full and then everyone else will clump together. Let's just see how this works. It's a big group, and it's a small room for a big group, so the sound is going to carry a lot. You're going to be doing talking with each other, so this is going to be a constant thing. I'm going to be like constantly interrupting you right when things get super juicy. So the first thing you're going to do is you're each going to take one to two sentences, like no kind of long descriptions, but you're just going to feel inside yourself, and you're going to take one to two sentences to share what your intention is for being here tonight. And you know, kind of like on a scale from one to ten, like, where are you? Do you want to be in a very kind of soft, are you in a tender place? You don't want to be pushed, you don't want to push yourself. Are you in a ten where you're just like, I am ready to have my heart ripped open, like, go for it. <laughs> so just, just give a number and then give one sentence for what brought you here and what you're looking for uh, from yourself tonight. And, and I would recommend for all these exercises, if you are with someone who's one of these, like, permissioners, let them model it for you, and then just go around in a circle. So we, you know, we don't have to do it popcorn style. It's like it sort of just gets done. So, and people that are permissioning their group, like, just keep everyone to one sentence or so, so that it moves. So go for it. Yeah, intention for being here. silence. It's really always the natural thing to fall into conversation. See what happens to the intensity of the group dynamic when you fall into silence and when you feel again into your body, what did the thing we just did do to how I feel? And then I'll be able to measure that you're done because the whole room will suddenly be silent. So if you're still doing the activity, get back into it, but really test that silence when you're finished. And I feel like I hear like one more group, so... Can you raise your hand if you're still going? You need a little more time? Great. Project about the other people in the group. Do you project that they're going to love you? Do you project that they're going to judge something about you? Do you project that you're safe or unsafe? You have no idea who these people are yet. So everything about that is coming from you. And that's another thing to notice. What do you bring? When you are about to have an opportunity for connection with somebody, what do you bring? To that relationship right off the bat before you know the first thing. Okay, so there are going to be five little activities, and they're each going to be in pairs within this group. So notice there's six people. You'll do one of these activities with each of these people. So all of you by the end of this will have done, you'll all have been like in the deep with each other. So choose your first pair out of that group. And when you choose them, sit in a way that you're facing each other directly. And if you're not on the ground and it's possible, make sure your legs are not crossed and your arms are not crossed. If you're sitting on the floor, it's fine. Sit in style or however you want to sit. So see if you 
can find your partner silently and see if you can settle into facing them and see if you can start to feel the intensity of just sharing silent eye contact with this person. Just see, what does that do to your body in the first three seconds when just silent connection is offered? And you're going to be here for a little while, so just keep going. So there's nothing wrong that you can do here. So if there's giggles that are coming out, that's like, yeah, let it out. Totally normal. Most people that do this the first time, it is completely nerve-wracking. Most people, by the fifth time, they are craving it like it's like a sauna or like a spa. And it's like finally the depth of that juicy connection. So just, you know, feel where you're at with it. And then check, check immediately in your own body is there something that I'm trying to protect here? Is there some way I'm holding myself, some posture, some stance, to try to be perceived in a certain way by this other person? And what if I didn't have to do anything like that in order to be connected to this person? What if they were just gonna accept me exactly as I was? And feel what that does in your body. And check specifically in the muscles in your face, that's where we tend to protect the most. Just notice what comes up for you. People hold a lot in their jaw, in their eyebrows, in their throat, in their eyes, and the ring of muscles around their eyes. As I said, let anything happen. There's no wrong thing. If you get more giggles, you can giggle for the next half hour. It's all good. There's no, no judgment. I see it in like 10 partners right now, so go for it. You. V-I-E-W. And the way I think of you is like it's, it's, a, it's a reminder of how to hold a certain state of mind that tends to lead to really deep connection. And it's hard sometimes to just say like, get into deep connection. But sometimes if there's a, like a, a reference point, like an acronym that can break it down into four parts, it can be really helpful for you to reference. And we're gonna be using that a bunch today. So the way I'm gonna introduce it is just tell you that VIEW stands for vulnerability, impartiality, empathy, and wonder. And right off the bat, what I want to reference is when I was asking you all in the in seats in the beginning, what made those deeply connected moments so great? You guys brought up all four of those. You brought up the open-hearted vulnerability, you brought up the impartiality of someone was just seeing you as you were, not trying to change you, you brought up the empathy of being seen and being felt, and you brought up the wonder, you brought up the curiosity. And so I just want to contrast some of those. So feel these all with your partner. So first, look at something and just think about the first thing that you know for sure about this person, just from seeing them. Just like take whatever assumption is there and just like know that it's true. And just feel what that does to your body. Like, Make some assumption and just feel, what does it feel like if I know that I know this person, I know that that's true. And now feel what happens if you found out that exactly the opposite was true of whatever your assumption is that came up. If you had no idea about this person. Feel what it changes in your body if you realize that you have no idea about this person's experience. How much energy is there to try to find out the answer and get rid of the wonder? And how much is like reveling in the wonder? This human being across from me that I know nothing about. And still through this whole thing, if more giggles come, that's fine. If you're nervous, that's fine. Everything's fine here. Start to look at this person as if you were like an objective scientist, just trying to kind of take data about, you know, this is the distance between their eyes, and this is their hair color. Just like, feel, I know, it's disgusting sometimes, but feel, feel what it feels like in your body, just for 20 seconds, to feel like I'm here, and I, I'm just taking data. I'm, I'm objectively looking at this person. And, and just check in, what does that do to the connection? And now, feel the other side. Feel the side that this person has been through challenges, heartache that I may never understand and I may never get in contact with. And although I might not find out, I know 
is true because all of us have had that heartache and challenge. And feel what it feels like to let that in, the empathy of the, the universality of that human experience. What does that do to your state of mind to, to feel the humanness, really? How deeply can you feel your partner's humanness? How deeply can you let it in with whatever it's going to come with? So the next one is impartiality, the I. Take a look and just imagine that this person has some, some problem, just, to, just make one up. And just feel what it feels like to, to really know what they should do, to have advice for them. Like, oh, I've been through that problem and all you gotta do is go see this person and it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Just like feel that agenda. You know better than them and you really want to fix their problem. You know, when someone comes to you and they have a problem, an immediate kind of urge comes to just like help them get rid of that problem. So now contrast that with whatever challenge they bring you, what it might feel like, to just be completely accepting of where they were, with no need to shift anything about their experience. For me, the quickest thing that can sever my connection with someone is if they have an agenda for me or even if I just imagine they have an agenda for me, completely severs that connection. Just feel what it feels, as, feels like to completely close yourself off to the connection. It's like an internal shift that can happen where you just kind of go behind yourself and you're not in communion with this other person. You're just with yourself, you're not gonna let anything out, you're not gonna let anything happen that's beyond what you know already. Just feel that invulnerability for a second. And now contrast that with what if, what if you felt so safe that you were willing to just have everything that your heart yearns for break open with this person? And I'm not saying to do that, but just to entertain what it feels like in your body if so much safety was there for exactly what you needed, that you were just gonna let exactly how you were out. You weren't gonna try to shape yourself at all to come into connection with this person. Because the irony is, if you're shaping yourself at all to get in connection, you're not in connection. Your mask is in connection. And it's what we all do, like, all the time. We try to figure out how people are going to connect more with us by shaping ourselves, and then we're not even there when the connection's happening. Really beautiful to see all of you into this space. I know how intense this place can be. So if you can silently thank your partner with either just a nod or a bow or a hug, whatever comes, just keep it silent. And silently find the next partner in your group. Silently. And as as I mentioned before, right now, right now, Mina is in the direct middle of the room. So if anyone already, like I know for a lot of people, even just what we did can be deeply intense for people. So don't hesitate to find Mina in the center, or we have other people. Mikey's in the corner. There's people here that can support that. It really depends on what your experience has been with that kind of closeness. And I just really want to deeply honor that for a second. There's no, there's no judgment about that. You know, one of the first times I ever did an eye contact uh, exercise with somebody, uh, they had been uh, attacked in the street at random by somebody. And just being next to somebody with eye contact brought flashbacks of that kind of violence. It's very intense, it's a very vulnerable position. So I want you to honor that if you need to honor that for your safety. There's no judgment about what it's doing in your body. It's very normal. So once again, eye contact with your next partner. But now we're going to do some talking. So that was, uh, in some sense, that's the most intense, intense one for a lot of people. We're going to go backwards through view. We're going to explore wonder, empathy, impartiality, and vulnerability. And what I want you to keep doing is just checking in with what that does, what that does to your body through that connection. So the wonder exercise 
is we'll, we'll call Mina partner A. And Mina's gonna state the thing in her life right now that she has the most curiosity about, that she, it's like a challenge going on in her life that she really wants to figure out. And she's gonna just state a question. She should state that question. And then Justin is gonna respond not with any kind of knowing or advice. He's gonna respond with a question that comes up for him around that challenge that she's having. And then she's gonna feed off of that and still with her own challenge, she's gonna see the new question that comes up for her about what's going on with her. And then Justin's gonna go again. And you're gonna go back and forth just on that one first thing that is your own challenge. Both questions are gonna to point to that one challenge and just see where it goes without ever needing to provide an answer. So let's see a demo of that. Okay. How can I stop trying to be in connection and just be here with you right now? And, and just let your own curiosity fuel this, like the actual wonder that you have about our situation. There's no way to get it wrong, right? How can I be present with everyone looking at me? <laughs> so, so is that in terms of you or in terms of me? In terms of both of us. Okay, so phrase it in terms of Mina's approach. It's great. But this is, it's, I'm really glad this happened because this is the trickiest part of the exercise. So. Yeah, with, with, with me, when Mina's challenge or curiosity comes up, what curiosity does that bring in you about Mina? That's the exercise we're doing. How can you be so confident right now? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you because that's almost uh, like a, what do they call it? Like almost rhetorical. But if you phrase it slightly different, it won't be rhetorical. Like you could say, what about this makes you confident or unconfident, et cetera, et cetera. Where do you find your confidence? Beautiful. That's a beautiful exception to the what or how, where it's a really beautiful question and it's open ended. What's confidence? Beautiful. How do you feel right now? What would be the edgier question to ask about her confidence or about her challenge in general that's come up? What? makes you feel more confident. Yeah, great. Cool. This is the exercise. So why don't you raise your hand in each pair? I have a question. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go to the questions in a second. But why don't you raise your hand in each pair? Okay, you're not the first person. <laughs> the other person's first. Question I have is that are we, uh, there is no answer. You're trying to question the question? Exactly. That's the beauty of it, yeah. We're, there, we're not offering any answers. We're seeing how curiosity can be met with curiosity and what happens if that, if that goes back and forth 10 times. What happens to you without any answers coming up? The key being all the questions are about the first person's statement, the first person's experience. So just go with that. Any other questions? Do you want to clarify that first statement? The first question, yeah, sure. The first statement is a question about the, the main challenge that is going on in your life right now. What is your curiosity? It's like, how do I find a partner? Or it's like, or how do I find a job? Or like, how do I get rid of a partner? Or you know, whatever it is. Like, <laughs> it's whatever is the main thing going on and the main question that you have about that thing. Cool? Go for it.
now switch. What is the other person's deepest challenge and their deepest curiosity about that challenge? And then all questions will go back and forth about that person's challenge. Go for it. Finishing up and falling back into silence. And as you fall back into silence, feel, feel the thing that you started with and feel how it changed by a, uh, giving it a sense of wonder and curiosity instead of needing to give it an answer. Instead of applying knowledge, applying deeper and deeper curiosity. What does that feel like in your body and how did that change your feeling of connection? Beautiful. Silently again, thank your partner and find another partner. Silently, silently. Okay, so fall into eye contact. If you have uh, people that have gone on bathroom break or anything like that, they'll be back in a minute. We'll keep it rolling. Um, you guys have like paired up already, for example? Yeah, great. Okay, so I'm just introducing these different aspects of a state of mind that in my experience tends to lead to very deep connection. So that was wonder versus knowledge. So the one that we're gonna explore now is empathy. And this is a really, Really straightforward uh, exercise, but can be really uh, interesting and surprising. So I wanna, is there two volunteers, a pair, a pair that wants to volunteer for the next one? Try to get it. I'm gonna have to call on somebody. Okay, awesome. Okay. This is the empathy exercise. This is a sentence stem. So there's a sentence stem, and all you're gonna do is fill in the sentence stem. The sentence stem is, I feel blank and that's okay. I feel your blank, and that's okay. That's it. So you're speaking how you are in the moment, and then you're just feeling the other person and feeling your interpretation of where they are. If you're trying to get this right, the exercise is not gonna work. Just say wherever you, whatever you feel is going on in the other side. Get it wrong. Just enjoy the process of tuning in to feel where someone's at. So let's hear it. I feel blank, and that's okay, and I feel your blank, and that's okay. And then when you're on the receiving end of it, just feel the impact of that as it comes to you, and then you'll say the same thing. I feel the presence of the crowd. And so say that in an emotion. Because that's doing something to you. I feel energy. Stated as an even more descriptive emotion. Uh, I feel intensity. So phrase it as an emotion. I'm going to give you, it doesn't create joy, does it create anger, does it create anxiety? Does it create grief? So it has to be an emotion. Yeah, it can be more detailed. I'm just saying they're yeah. kind of families. Mm -hmm. But when you feel that energy, what does it create in your body? What emotion? I feel joy in being in community. Cool, so just, just to keep it simple, just for everyone, let me just say I feel joy and that's OK. So only mention the emotion. Yeah, no context. Got it. Yeah. Okay. We all want to provide context. It actually takes away from the intensity of this owning that I just feel something. I feel joy, and that's okay. Yeah, just feel what that does when you when you say it, and then say the same for what you feel in breath. I feel strength, and that's okay. I feel your strength. Your strength, and that's okay. Cool. And now your turn, right? I feel pain, emotional and physical, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I feel your peace, and I feel relaxed. So just keep it to his piece. I feel your piece. I feel your okay. piece, and that's okay. 
Beautiful. And that's it. Just back and forth. I feel this and that's okay. I feel you are this and that's okay. How did the experiences, how were they contagious to one another? How did you influence each other just by being as you were? What did that do to your sense of connection? How much were you trying to be something else versus just owning where you were? And feel it in your body, not just in your mind. Feel like, how does your body feel different? And once again, silently, Thanking your partner and finding another in your group. Beautiful. So see what this feels like. See how this feels different than the first three times we did this. Right? It was only 15 minutes ago, and now you're settling in with a totally new person. You just feel what's different about your body when you're in connection with this person. No discussion needed. Eyes open in connection with your partner. So we've explored how wonder changes the feeling of connection and how empathy changes the feeling of connection. And now we're gonna look at impartiality. We're gonna look at what happens when there's no agenda to change a person. And what does that feel like when you're met by someone who has no agenda to change you? So I need one volunteer, I won't put a pair up to it, but I need one, uh, you know, hopefully someone that I already, you know, know can permission the space. Brian, awesome, beautiful. So this is an uh, exercise, it's another sentence stem. Brian's over here in the white, just in case he hasn't talked yet, there you go. Mike is coming over to him. So this sentence stem now, what, what's your partner's name? Don. Don, beautiful. Don, you're gonna have something to say, but it doesn't require, it's just gonna be canned. It's, it's, uh, it's the easy part, which is why I didn't need two volunteers. Brian is going to say something that creates judgment in himself. Something that he judges about his own life or his own experience. <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot to do that in front of 100 people, much less one person, so give some props. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Actually, while we're here, I just want to, what happened to your body when I said that? Like, what changed? Uh, a couple things. Like, immediately, my, like, I felt a lot of energy in my chest. And then the sigh and the dropping the shoulders back was like, ah, oh, it's gonna happen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, this'll be good. <laughs> Probably a lot of you, as soon as you heard part of the sentence, have had a, some kind of visceral reaction, like, I'm gonna do that too. So, I, I, this is the kind of thing I want us to be paying attention to. Like, what changes in your life when you're okay having a bodily reaction to what you're gonna do, and that thing that you're gonna do is you being authentically yourself? How does that change with how you relate with people if you're like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have some tension in my throat today. I'm gonna be tight in my chest because I really wanna share this part of myself. And, and that's the invitation, is to feel what it does to your body. You don't have to go to some crazy personal thing, go where you, you feel on that edge. So Brian is gonna just say, um, I, I judge myself for blank. And he's gonna keep it, once again, really short. What you'll find with all these exercises is the shorter you keep it, the more powerful it is. If you start saying, I judge myself, or sometimes I'm late when I go to work and I wanna do this, no, no, I judge myself for my lateness. Much more you'll feel it right in your body. So he's gonna just say that with, with one or two words. I judge myself for needing to prove myself. So I judge myself for needing to prove myself. Now Don is just gonna say, I love your need to prove yourself, and I'm not here to change you. I love your need to prove yourself, and I'm here to change you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, person A, I judge myself for blank, 
Person B, I love your blank. You might have to twist the phrase to make it work. I love your blank, and I'm not here to change you. So choose who's going to go first, and then you're just once again going to go right when that person says, I love your blank, and I'm not here to change you. Then they're going to say something they judge about themselves. And we're going to go back and forth. Once again, feel the impact that this has on your body. Stay in connection and feel what happens when this person across from you doesn't judge anything about the way that you are. And how does that help you feel connected? What does it bring up? Maybe it actually unleashes other things that want to come out as it feels safe. Maybe you don't trust that the other person really doesn't judge you. Just see, just check. What happens if there's an offer of non-judgment and impartiality from you? And as you gave those statements of acceptance, what do you think impact that had on the partner across from you of their willingness to share themselves as they are with you instead of to shape themselves to fit what they think you're going to need? How often is someone met by complete love and acceptance? What would happen if you were surrounded with that all the time? What would want to emerge from you? So now silently thank your partner again, and you're going to come back into a silent circle of your original group. And just look around and, and feel again as you look around at this group. You've shared experiences with these people and just feel like, what does that change now? These aren't total strangers anymore. I've had very different and potentially very intense experiences with these people, often without knowing anything about them, right? Often without even knowing their name, unless you just randomly saw it on a name tag. <laughs> so this is, you know, when we get usually stuck in chit chat for an hour with somebody, these are the things that are all five seconds away that are possible in our connecting with them. The, the last one that we're going to work on from view, which is this state of mind that tends to amplify connection, is vulnerability. And to me, if you have all the other ones and you don't have vulnerability, it's all not going to work. Vulnerability is the linchpin. It's the, it's the core of all of this. You have to be willing to do something that you know is your authentic truth and that might have consequences. And so now that you're back in a group, the exercise is is really simple. We're just going to each share one phrase or one sentence that's vulnerable for us to say in the group. And that could be anything, but what I'd love to focus on is something vulnerable that happened to you in the last 45 minutes. Something vulnerable about your experience doing this very thing. Not some story from 20 years ago. All of us have had something edgy happen in our experience and this is a chance to see how much you want to lean into that and what does it feel like to share that part of my experience with the whole group that I've been with. There was a question? What if the thing that, was, that made you vulnerable happened a while ago, but it was reminded, you were reminded of it? Yeah, the, the, the deciding factor is if it makes you nervous to say it. You know it's a vulnerable thing. That should be your number, right? So if you, if it, yeah, something that came up for you that someone reminded you of something, uh, and it's just some kind of like sadness, like extreme sadness is not vulnerability unless it's hard, right? We have a lot of different relationships. With, for me, one of the most vulnerable things was be, being able to let myself feel anger because that wasn't allowed. For me. So let yourself feel into what is the edgy thing for you to share and, and see what it feels like to share with the group. So just keep it to like one sentence. Once again, the shorter it is, the more intensity you're going to feel with it. And if you have one of the like permissioners in your group, let them go first and then just go clockwise around from that. Um, is there one of those permissioners that wants to volunteer just to give an example? I know this is intense with 100 people. Awesome. Sam. I'm 
my palms were sweaty the entire time. Mm. And what, are, what does that mean? It's going to scare or like there's something going on in the body, you know, in yeah. every direction. Yeah, so what does it feel like if you're facing them and you say, I was scared the entire time I've been here? I was scared the entire time I was here. <laughs> Yeah. Points. 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 Yeah. So, so notice the shortness of the phrase is like, bam. That's what you're looking for. Thank you so much, Sam. That's beautiful. And notice also there's ways to describe, and then there's ways to go to the core emotion of what's going on. Thanks. Everyone get started. And just share one sentence, and then when you're done, fall back into silence. Silence will let me know that all the, all the groups are, are finished. I want to make sure everyone. Is there any group that's not done yet? Okay, so once again, uh, while that group is finishing up, just take stock of where your body is. You know, you're with five other human beings that are all having totally their own experience, and you've explored what it's like to meet their experience with wonder. Meet it with empathy, meet it with no agenda, and to be vulnerable, to sit on that edge of something that is true for you and that's hard to share. And what that thing is can be remarkably different for different people. So feel, what do those things change about your feeling of connection? This is people that you most likely didn't even know an hour ago. And what does that open up for the possibility of connecting with them? Thank the people in your group, and then we're going to do two things with the whole, whole group. Everyone stand up and just kind of fill, you know, fill the space. There's, there's a couple things that we can do in the remaining time, but the thing that I'm most excited about and you know, most, most feel at my own edge is to play another game that, for me, I've been calling the Vulnerability Challenge. You know, feel what happens in your body when you hear that the game is called Vulnerability Challenge. The game here is you've all gotten to taste what that does. And, and my guess is there's like a third of the people in the room that don't want to be here anymore because it just feels truly <laughs> terrifying and all that sort of thing. And a third that are, you know, somewhere in the middle of interesting curiosity. And then a third who are like, there's something here that my body and heart have been craving forever, and I want more. I want more access to it. And what I have found is that the more I'm willing to surrender to the vulnerable, true thing in me, the more I'm connected with everybody. And most importantly, the more I'm actually reconnected with myself. So what I'm offering now is we have some time for anyone that wants to to offer something vulnerable to the entire room. Whatever that nature of anything is, um, I'll modulate it with time and with all that sort of thing. But I want everyone to just think about for a second, what would that thing be? What would that thing be that if I was, if I was totally safe, I wasn't judged, I was completely supported in it, just like let your heart dream for a second of what it is that I would want to let go of and let be supported by 100 people. And I'm not even promising that everyone here will be able to support you, but I know I will, and I know a large fraction of the people in the room will. And so I just want you to feel, what does it feel like? like how does your heart want to sing something out? And, and feel what that does to your body. Right. In, my, in my guess, the only time we can't find something is because it's too much fear to even entertain the possibility of what actually wants to come out. So now, in my guess, everyone's got something, whether they want to do anything in public with it or not, is a totally secondary thing. 
but I wanted to see by a show of hands who has something that if they really did feel safe and supported in the right way, they would want to share. Cool. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I keep, keep like way high just so I can get it. All right, that's really beautiful. I'm like, I'm just I'm like I'm gonna grieve a little bit. This is so simple. Like the thing that hits me so deeply is that this is so simple. Like all we are is craving that kind of safety. And like in my mind, I've met enormously beautiful facilitators and healers, and they have amazing skills. And what actually the only thing we need is each other to say that we're not going to judge each other and that we have to let stuff go. I, what I would advise is you're going to go into the, the schmoozing portion of the evening and see what happens if you bring this view with you, if you bring the vulnerability, you say that edgy thing, you bring the empathy, you bring the non agenda impartiality to the people you're talking to, and you bring the curiosity. What does that change about what usually is small talk? How, how much connection can you get from everyone that's here? Thanks so much, everyone.